<laughs> I remember the morning of the game, he came to me and was like, well, you never get to talk, mate. I've been done. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I've been asked to do a video. And it is, I think you've been injured maybe or something. And and it was like, um, he left a me- it was like a message saying, oh, hey, Alex, I uh, just want to wish you all the best. We know, you, we know you've been out injured for a little while. And, uh, so, you know, tear into them and, and all the yeah. best tonight, mate. <laughs> Of it, I just, I, I just, all the whole time, I was just like, I can't wait to speak to the after the game. Here. It was just, it was just a genius, genius moment. Hello, and welcome to the Rugby Pass Offload Podcast with Max Leahy, Brian Wilson, myself, Mark Edwards. Later on the show, we'll be joined by England and Saracens by half Alex Zosky. But first, how was the bank holiday weekend for everyone? Oh, well, I know where someone was. I know where someone was. Where were you, Max? Talk to me. I was on the ship, part of the ship, part of the crew, down Wandsworth Way. <laughs> oh, Christ, lads. It was a throwback to the old days of old. Just Ram- rammed, rammed, 45 minutes to get a beverage. Obviously, I wasn't drinking. I don't, I don't drink when I'm injured, obviously. obviously. Yeah. But yeah, um, <laughs> so, but yeah um, fantastic day out. Um, so got, to, got to debrief, got to talk a lot of code, unfortunately, a lot of shop. Oh, um, yeah. There were a few... Few of the usual suspects down there, some real prem heads. Um, good times. Won't mention any names. Infamy. But yeah, you did, you good. did spot you did spot a uh, a Corporal Bean though who had played in the Army. Cor- <laughs> Corporal Bean came up to me and Sam Matabasi and Joel just called me and were like, How's right getting on? Tell that guy all this stuff, mate. And we we're trying to FaceTime you, and obviously he didn't didn't buzz, didn't didn't answer. No, I Very answered sadly. it a bit later on. I was like, what Oh, did you? you? And phoned them back and they were laughing their heads off. They're like, We're with you, mate, Leaf. I was like, all oh, right. Toby Calvary, yeah. Little tip of the hat oh, to that man. Did you go chance. and watch the Army Navy game? You didn't, did you? No, no, I didn't watch it, no. Yeah, I watched other squads jealous. were there, Max, though. Um, we had a few was lads, a few of the Irish gentlemen. Um Sean O'Brien made a, a brief appearance in my memory. He was he was on great form. Um, who else was there? Um, a few of the Bristol and Bears chaps. It was it was it was a good day. There was a healthy a healthy retinue of the finest egg chasers in the Premiership. God, I haven't been there for ages. That was yeah, the, I bet. that was the spot, eh? Hey, on a Sunday. Yeah, was it, on a Sunday? it was. On a well, it's still the spot for a bank holiday here. Yeah. It's out. It's yeah, it's a bit out of control. Yeah, very jealous of that. No, I'd travel back. We, I, yeah, lost, lost all track of days, but I think I got back on Sunday. Um, two eight and a half hour flights, Jobo to Dubai, Dubai to Glasgow. And honestly, by the time I got back, oh my God, absolutely wrecked. Yeah, it was a long old journey back, especially after the, the game against the Bulls. Yeah, quick one on that. On that match, it was a great game. If you are not a Warriors fan, oh yeah, um, God, big old men, big old men. I'll be honest, I didn't really feel the. Uh, it might have looked like it, but the, you know, being at altitude, I didn't really feel it too much. But um, yeah, they're just some big men, and those South African teams at the moment are just picking up. They've got a load of games at home. They're all on a run, and uh, they've they've climbed their way back up to the top of the table. So. We're all right. We've uh, qualified for the quarters through uh, Ospreys helping us out, but we'll be all right, boys. Don't worry about us. Big game coming up in a couple of weeks. Leon this weekend, so over there, another small pack that we'll come up against. And then uh, potentially a semi-final if we win that, and then Edinburgh. Um, so it's all to play for. Now, that Edinburgh match is going to be massively spicy, right? Because does, does the winner grab the last Champions Cup spot? Yeah. Yeah, they do. So it'll be huge. And we play, obviously, for the oldest cup in rugby, 1872 Cup. So um, we're playing for that as well, which goes from the game we had previous in the season. We beat them. So, yeah, it's a big old one. Big derby match. Looking forward to it. But, um, we'll be all right. We'll be fine. But Leon first. Leon this weekend. It's going to be pretty difficult. We'll go over yeah. there and play at nine o'clock at night, Max. Ooh. <laughs> oh. I know. Saturday at nine o'clock. Yeah, while we're at it, Ryan, what's the um, what's what's the most memorable derby match you've ever been involved in? Well, it's funny you asked me that because I'm, I've, I forgot actually to get this up, right? But I had to I had to Google it because you know what my brain's like in terms of how much I've been knocked about and what I'm forgetting and what I'm remembering. But 
I remember Chris Fazzaro um, and Scott McLeod, who are 1872 cut back, absolutely battering the life out of each other, like full on just punching and punching and punching. But I had to Google when it was, and I, I actually can't believe it. It was in, I, I swear it said 2010. That can't be right, can it? Bloody hell, it is, yeah. Shit. Oh, my God. That's scary, isn't it? And I played in that game, 2010. Absolutely yeah. punching the life out of each other. But listen to this. When I found this, when I found it on my phone, I wanted to find out when it was. 2010, but this here. And honestly, these boys were going at it. You look at it on YouTube. They're just like swinging, trying to punch. And then I'm pretty sure someone held... Uh, Chris was always on my team's arms behind his back while Scott McLeod's still getting them in. <laughs> but here, this shows how much the game has changed. Mr. Hunter said that the panel considered it was a low end offence by both players whose previous good behaviour and their contrition on the night of the game and in their appearance before the panel was taken into account in mitigation. A one week ban. <laughs> oh, oh, imagine like that nowadays. That You know what I mean? That was 12 years ago. In that documentary, The Ice Guardians, with the, the Goonies. Oh, my the favourite. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? It's sort of like that, isn't it? That's what it used to be like. You could literally <clears throat> roll around with some sort of semi-good rugby player, but an absolute maniac card case and yeah, get away with it. <laughs> Just throwing himself about. Well, this is the other thing. We, we were talking about it at training today, because I can't remember how it got onto it, but um, the Nines were talking about people rolling in the way. Do you remember when you could yeah, run? mate. And you could literally run on people's backs and scrape their backs. With nah. your as long as it wasn't in a stamping motion, it was a rucking motion. <laughs> yeah, you just climbed up their back in like a strokey way. Yeah, how, just not How good was that? How, how good was that? Like, awesome. why did they ever take that out? <laughs> mate, the lacerations were real, weren't they? Yeah. I've got a few marks on me, actually. From... Yeah, the state of people's backs back in the day yeah. from being allowed to ruck people out. Right, he's in the way. And nines used to do it, didn't they? And they'd just yeah, run on them. Nines would, yeah. Oh. Even if you put your hands on the ball as well. Wham! Straight on there. That's me beeping. You all use these all the time, aren't you, Max? Well, no, I oh, yeah, using the, using the compacts? Yeah, I, mean, I got that. I got dead leg again in the game, so... Oh, uh, just pumping it. Pumping it up. What does it do, boys? It's a, sort of an electrode that basically fires up your muscle without any of your own input. So it's its own electrode. What, like the old Cristiano Ronaldo six-pack yeah, machine? Yeah, exactly, like the six-pack machine. That's but... where I've had it. I've had one on my <laughs> one on my abs and one on my nuts. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone's tried that, haven't they? Yeah. Getting, oh, getting let's, rid of let's see how it goes on the, on the old boy. <laughs> we can grow them. Um, but those things are really potent once you get jack them up. Yeah, yeah, the old chance Chattanooga. Um, staying with the Derby <clears throat> games angle, if you will, uh, Gloucester versus Bath at the weekend, record breaking 64 point loss for Bath. Max, Holy. how gutting is it to see your old clubs falling apart? It seems like, mm, yeah, it's, it's not. I thought they were on the way up as well recently, they had a few strong performances. But um, yeah, that that was capitulation at its finest, wasn't it? Gloucester were good, but um, and they needed a reaction to get to sort of put themselves back in in, in, in a derby game as well. They needed a reaction off the back of losing to us. So, um, and they yeah, the Kings on faithful got that reaction. My God, it was a good game though to watch if you were a Gloucester fan. But <laughs> it's not looking good. Uh, it's at, ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, like, look at their team, Max. Look at the boys they had out there. Like, I, I didn't watch it, and I because we were flying back, and someone said, "Oh, you heard Bath just lost," and I was like, "No chance." Thinking maybe they've chucked out a bomb squad or something. But my dad, Cipriani, Falatau, Underhill, yeah, Bayless, back row, it's... Jonathan Joseph was he playing? Pretty sure, pretty sure I saw him in the highlights, clinging onto some hills. I uh, don't think I saw Anthony Watson in there, but um, well, what the hell has happened there, man? Who who's it, who's to blame? I mean, you've told me the funny stories about this fella that that goes down the train and that owns the place that is like maybe maybe he's he can't play. No, he doesn't speak a bit properly. He's going down the train and like messing around too much, and the boys just maybe like, oh, it's just like yeah. But I think 
there obviously we're, we're we're going on to the topic at hand right now, which is obviously the lack of relegation, um, and also they've already lost um, bigger get like in bigger. They've already had bigger losses, haven't they? Like Sammy's at home, that was massive. Is wasn't that a bigger a bigger loss or about the same? I, mean, I suppose it's the it's the nil that makes it. Yeah, like, it's the nil that really kind of, and it's also a derby, and it's yeah, you're not against the cherry and whites, no, but. Um, yeah, maybe there's a sort of desensitization, isn't there? Yeah, but no, uh, no. But you know, you don't buy into that. You can't think buy. Of those, think of those guys out in that field, like the likes of Falatau, <laughs> Sam Underhill, people like this. Like I know Cipriani's been knocked for what he was like back in the day, but these boys, you don't want to be part of something like that. So you all like fighting. You, you're not going. Oh, all right, the boys, boys, the season's over, and they're only like one point under Worcester, so they're going. Let's not finish bottom. I just, I, I cannot. And listen, it happens to all of us days like that. Like I've been involved in a few of them, but Jesus, man, like it was, it was bad. And again, you know, you, the, the other thing, and it was like us with the Stormers, once they get ahead of you by a good few points, you start thinking, right, we've got to force anything and try everything to try yeah. and pull it back a bit. You, everything exactly. goes out the window. So I completely understand that side of it, but it's just happening too much to them, isn't it? And who is it? Is it Hooper? Is that the coach? Yeah. Yeah, there must be some kind of. I debrief. mean, what what's that debrief like? Yeah, when I get that's what I mean though. It's probably happened a few times that debrief. That exact debrief's happened a few times. Surely, that's what I'm saying. The whole season. This is the sort of the story of the season. So maybe potentially there's like there's um a sort of a acclimatization to it. it. Becomes habitual, doesn't it? Like you, I don't know. Like it's hard to go further down than that in sport. Yeah, yeah. this so is like, this is you know this is where those stories of locking them in the change room with as yeah. many beers as possible. But that's what they're trying to do at the moment. Yeah. Oh, oh and it's going wrong. Has that happened? <laughs> have you had Have you had news that they've been on the pits and then? Oh, no, Ed, Ed Griffiths has come in and he's um he's 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 adding in socials. Ed Griffiths, the man of Sarries of old, he was the guy who sort of galvanised that culture by. Sending them on random round the world trips with question mark destinations in groups of whatever and becoming the best <laughs> socially that they could be, so they could be better on the field. And I think that's sort of that's the process they're going through right now. That's the fuck. I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, let's cut this bit out because I don't want anyone finding out that that doesn't work. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we need we need that to work. So if we could cut this bit of the podcast out, then there's then there's the lack of the threat of relegation as well. Okay, well let's that, let's go let's go with that. Do, I mean, what, what we've talked about it a little bit, but do, do we think that that there's an element? Oh man, surely there is. Don't, you've got to be you'd be sketching. You if you're not winning, you you potentially are going to Mosley away on Friday night. Mate, Kelsey yeah, Commons <laughs> a place to go. Don't don't you throw that one out there because that's. Mate, I've been there a few times. Don't worry, it's a place to go. Those old. Um... But you're right. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you're you know right. I, mean? I, I think I think there needs to be relegation. I think there has to be relegation. I think it's ridiculous. There's not. Um, and you, yeah, maybe that will change some of the habits. But I, yeah, I just can't see some of the some of the guys they've got in that team going, oh, because you know, these guys have got international careers they're trying to look after as well. So, you know, it's not down to the lack of them trying and their effort, but mm. it's got, you've got to, I mean, you've got to get rid of the coach. you just got to get rid of him. There's no, there's no hope now. Max, you're going to see Chris Ashton becoming the Prem all-time top scorer, 20 minute first half hat trick. Qu- quick word on, on his genius as a player. Yeah. Well, he's definitely in the argument, isn't he? He's got to be one of the greatest finishers in the Prem's history. Like, He's he's got a certain a certain style though, isn't it? It's like that off the ball running. Um, he's a very very crafty, clever player. He's always in the right place, right time. Um, mad rugby acumen in that regard. Uh, yeah, and obviously he's that guy you love to hate as well with the um, the, the, the splash down and all that. Um, the ash splash. Uh, I was glad that he didn't do it. What a way! What a way to. I think he's he's, he's mellow. <laughs> He's mellowed out in his old way. Yeah, his old I know, but hold on a minute. <laughs> what, because it would have been in his mind. He's he's going, I've scored one, I've scored two. And he did he break it on the third? 
Yeah, uh, no, it wasn't the second. I thought you did it on the second. Oh, okay. Well, even with the third, you're like, I've <laughs> broken it, but now I'm going to smash it. And you you do it. You're like, do you know what? Give the fans what they want, man. Like, you know, I know he's changed and he'd probably get... But I was thinking, come on, you've got to do it. You've yeah, got to do it. Do it, it he didn't do it, yeah. To, to smash it with a, a hat trick that quick as well was... Yeah, very uh, quick, yeah. It was pretty cool to see. you got to say, you got to say it. Um, well, let's... Uh, it, firstly... Fabulous to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on, Alex. How how was your bank holiday? Oh, I was quiet, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, we've been in tra- we got game Friday night now against um, Gloucester, so we've been training Monday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, yesterday, and today. So, yeah, Sunday was a uh, you know quiet one, and it, you sort of sat there at home, just like looking at your phone. And everyone's out, and it's busy, and yeah, I think that's just obviously the life of a rugby player on bank holiday, unfortunately, but. Um, yeah, I actually well, to be fair, I had a long weekend. I had Friday off, so I managed to, you know, spend a bit of time with the missus and do some nice things, which you don't normally get to do on like a weekend if you're like away in like Worcester or wherever you might be. So, um, yeah, but yeah, it would have been nice to go out on Sunday with everyone else, but I suppose that's just the way it goes. Max, can you confirm yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. there was no <laughs> Saracens <laughs> players at the ship on Sunday? Can you just listen? Don't name anyone. We don't want to get any. Can you confirm there was no Saracens players there? <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Yeah, no. so if I did hear a few whispers about um, uh, certain members sort of uh, showing their face, as they as they call it. Yeah, they might be. Yeah, might have been on the cokes and on the lemonades. Yeah, you know who knows what they were up to, but um, you know some people got to, like keep appearances up, and you know maybe some some of the younger lads are just uh, trying to keep their faces out there. But I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, Los Los. Loz knows enough. He knows. He knows. He knows something. <laughs> I know a few bits. Yeah, he knows what I know. <laughs> yeah. Alex, what's what's Ed Griffith's effect been on 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 the lash at Saracens? What his legacy that he's left? He's not there anymore. But yeah, I mean, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think when he came in, you know, it's not. I guess it's not a secret. We've seen the recent um, stuff in Bath, and they went to Marseille and South of France recently. And I think um, it's just something that he really believed in sort of um, you know, team bonding and getting to know each other. I think you know, um, the lads will agree that, you know, you probably don't really get to know somebody properly that well until you sort of socialise with them and, you know, um, enjoy that side of it. So, um, you know, he, he brought that in. And to be fair, even after he's left, you know, they, they've, they've carried on with that. And um, we were in, we played Breve a few weeks ago and, you know, went to Bordeaux um, for the day after, went to like a... Uh, a wine farm for lunch, which is great, and then into Bordeaux, into town after. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just nice every now and again in the season to let your hair down a little bit and um, yeah, sort of uh, create a few stories to talk about um, in the weeks that come up after that. And you know, when you're back in the grind, you can sort of look back on that and you know enjoy those memories. Really, is there like one ultimate trip for you that you think back that was amazing? I think for me, it's, it, it's a, there's been so many good ones, but the one that I enjoyed the most was, um, it wasn't even actually really a trip, but it was it was a game week in Philadelphia. We played against Newcastle Falcons in Philadelphia uh, three or four seasons ago. And um, yeah, so for the boys that were playing on that weekend, um, it was sort of, you know, training, you know, getting themselves ready to play against Newcastle. But um, I was amongst the boys who weren't playing that weekend. And um, I mean, it was a hell of a week in Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> we were at the basketball, we were at the baseball um, in town. We went to um, went to watch one of the uh, university teams play college football at the Philadelphia Eagles um, NFL stadium, and that was crazy. Like forty thousand people tailgates in the in, in the uh, in the car park. Um, yeah, team one was a struggle for me that week. Um, and I was 24th man so I had to do the warm up as well and I was just like praying no one please no one go down here I, I need everyone to get <laughs> I need everyone to get through this warm up so um, that was actually that was probably my favourite one actually we were there for a week it was, it was class they're the ones though the boys that are in the 23 again hold on a minute like looking at like fucking these boys have got a pretty cush deal I'm Pick up a little hammy or something. And yeah, I get to join yeah. them for the week. Yeah, you just well, yeah. I mean, there was, there was definitely a few lads who were in the twenty-three um, who, who you know, I'd say were hanging about with us a bit more than <laughs> they should have been. 
Right, so it's not just the not just the non twenty three. The twenty three were there as well. No, there's a few from the twenty three there, but um, yeah, no, it was class. I mean, in the end, I can't even remember how the game. I think we won the game. It wasn't a great game, but um, yeah, a week in Philly, never been there before. I don't think any of the lads have ever been there before, and it was just um, that, that was a good one. And that wasn't even a trip, so um, oh, I guess that says it all. It, um, asking for a team that I know, but how long does the Ed Griffiths effect have on the team? Like, how quickly does that like kick in? Because we were worried about Bath and said we yeah. think they might be going on the piss and then Too turn much. up and get him 60, 60 or points put on them. Yeah, and this is the thing. So I think um, Sarri's record at sort of either side of a trip or a team bonding session has been has been pretty good because like the fear just like drives the voice, you know. So they, you know, you know that you've got to, like perform before you go trying to get a victory and then if you're like having a few beers and socialising together sort of two days out before a game you get back from that you do team on you're like right, we really need to win this one so yeah I mean I hope for Bath they, they um, you know like they can get a bit of that going because um, yeah it's obviously been a tough season for them but yeah I'd say that it's really fear driven which is uh, which is quite a powerful quite a powerful thing when it comes down to it yeah they've forgotten that bit I think they might have I think they might have forgotten to do that bit because me, me and Max are worried now. We're worried that this is going to happen there and then they're going to break the cycle. Because you boys, I've I've played against you boys and you've come and played us, hammered us, and then been like, oh, we're just off skin tonight. And I'm like, yeah. what? And they're like, yeah, we've got a game next week. And you oh, always do yeah. it. But Bath could ruin this for everyone in a minute. Well, yeah, they could if, if, if it carries on. They might just get completely abolished for, forever, which would be which would be a pity for sure. But um, you know, yeah, you know, like going too like into too much detail. You know, Bath, I think they've got the players there um, to turn it around. And you know, it's obviously been a bad season, but maybe wipe the slate clean next yeah. season. Maybe Ed will maybe Ed will throw in a couple more trips to try and get them going. I don't know, but um, we'll see. <laughs> Did you agree with that then? Because we were speaking about this earlier. Max was saying. He thinks because of the relegation, he reckons there's a point where they're just like, well, there's nothing left to play for. Do you reckon that's why they're getting hammered? Yeah, I, I think it's got to come into it a little bit. Um, you know, I played in in France last season um, at Montpellier, and we were we had a terrible start of the season. We really struggled, and you know, the fear of getting relegated in the end because we we were down there, we were like in the mix of a, you know of a proper scrap at the bottom. And in the end, that was what sort of brought us together. And we were like, geez, we can't go down here. So we're going to have to really roll our sleeves up. And you know, we won a couple of really tight games that we maybe shouldn't have won. But I think that fear from experience that yeah, definitely works. drives you. So I think, you know, I, I, you know I'd, like to see, I'd like to see relegation come back into it because I think it makes for a more competitive league. Um, you know, games mean something at the end of the season. Um, you know, that, and that was, that was true of, of us in Montpellier last year. So... Yeah, you know, I, I think that danger is is important in rugby, and I think if you you know if you watch any French rugby, if anyone watched any French rugby, you know, and they've got a good relegation and promotion system, every single weekend is a is a is a proper match, and they get good crowds and like they, they get behind the team. So I, I think that's massive. I think they should come back in if if possible. I've just got a question on this, right? Because I, I don't want to I don't want to forget to ask you, but do yeah. you? Do you remember when I think was it last season Glasgow came and played? You're about to ask me here, yeah. I think you know. I know what you're about to ask me. Is it, it's about the cameo. Yes, yeah. please. Genius, I, I was racking my brains today trying to remember exactly how it went because I was thinking, what is this? But do you you want to explain this? Yeah, I know. Well, so basically, um, <laughs> cameo. I, I mean, cameo is sort of like a, I don't really get it to honestly, but it's where celebrities, like big time celebrities charge cash for personal messages. Max has probably got an account. No, I've got one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big times and... Paying, yeah, hey, paying big them all yeah. I'm, all right, I'm, right, well, I'm using this one because this is unbelievable. Carry on, sorry, Loss. Yeah, so... Well, so basically, Goody's got one, Alex Goody's got one, which, I mean, for me, is just hilarious because, I mean, I, God knows who's paying him 50 quid a video um, to send messages, but... Um, I ended up paying Goody for, a, I ended up sort of a bit like posing as somebody else as an imposter online and getting Goody to send a message to uh, one of the boys in our team for like a happy birthday. And um, 
it got the boys like on cameo thinking like who the hell is on cameo like obviously you got like people like i don't know like jay-z and uh you know the guys from the in-betweeners who are probably like getting thousands of requests a day as they would naked martin yeah, yeah that's it yeah that blokes like that basically <laughs> and then um it was sort of this video was sort of flying around a whatsapp group and then the lads were going on who's on it and then there was a lad there's a, a, a lad from glasgow um is it grig nick griggs, griggs. Yeah. nick griggs got one and he's charging like 13.99 a video i mean god no i mean bear in mind half that goes to cameo so he's getting like seven pounds fifty per video and um one of the boys got <laughs> sent him a message and got him to send got him to send the message to someone who was playing a game tonight and wanted a good luck message and it was me against him he's my opposite number um, and it was a it was a genius video. And um, after the game, I just said to him, "Mate, thanks for the video, mate. That really, <laughs> that really got me through that game." And they just it was a bit awkward. But... <laughs> I remember the morning of the game. He came to me. He was like, "Wilfs, you never get caught, mate. I've been done." I was like, "What's been?" He's like, <laughs> I've been asked to do a video, and it is. I uh, think you've been injured, maybe, or something. And uh, and it was like. Um, he left a bit. It was like a message saying, Oh, hey, Alex, I uh, just wanted to wish you all the best. We know, you, we know you've been out injured for a little while. And uh, so, you know, tear into them and, and all the yeah. best tonight, mate. That was it. I just, I, I just, all the whole time, I was just like, I can't wait to speak to Nick after the game here. It was just, it was just a genius, genius moment. I then sent it to you. Oh my god, that is absolutely amazing, oh Matt. Gosh. Mate, are you not are you not worried about that happening to you on there, Matt? Oh, I get pranked all the time. I'll be fine with it. I'm, I've lost all kind of sense of shame with that sort of thing. I'm, yeah. I'm desensitized. Yeah, you've got to sell your soul, really. I think yeah, you've got to be quiet. Oh, a bit of integrity, lose it. That is priceless. That is oh That's mate. Me. Honestly, his face when he came to me, he was like. <laughs> Because I think uh, Skax, Sean Maitland. Yeah, because we're on the same WhatsApp group. The videos are going around that group, and then Sean just obviously found it incredibly nice. Nice. It, was just, nice. it was just nice. class. It's class. Oh, Alex, you uh, recently signed your contract at Saracens. Lots of other clubs obviously circling around. Uh, any slightly left field inquiries to to acquire your services? Uh, not not too left field. I, I mean, um, yeah, I, I, there was obviously in Montpellier um, the. The, the first half of the season, they couldn't wait to get rid of me. Um, and, I, you know, because we were so bad and I wasn't playing that well and uh, all the rest of it. But then, obviously, the second half of the season, we sort of came back and did all right. We won sort of 10 games in a row. We won the Challenge Cup final. Um, and so, sort of their, their opinion sort of changed, you know, of me, which is nice. And so that, there was there was a bit of interest to go back there. Um, but I think uh, in the end, just uh, having just got back to London, um, and you know, got back to their friends, family, etc. It was uh, I always wanted to stay really, and um, having settled back in. So um, yeah, it was it wasn't uh, too too much of a difficult decision in the end. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy to be to be staying for the next few seasons. Yeah, Alex. Bearing in mind, we know the the happy ending of of the story, but can you just tell us like, a little bit how you felt when? You were voted, I think, one of the one of the worst signings uh, at the yeah. at the time mid season. Uh, third one, Montpellier. Third one. <laughs> Sorry. That's yeah. Mark's yeah. words as well. <laughs> yeah, All no, it was um, <clears throat> it's like it's like it's never nice to sort of uh, to see that. But I mean, I've I've been uh, you know as the boys will know, you get criticised in rugby. You get you get praised, you get criticised. You know, um, throughout your career, um, that one was uh, probably one of the more brutal ones um, that I've had. And I think there was four of us from the team in the top 10. So um, at least I wasn't on my own in that. Um, yeah, we got off to a terrible start of the, of the season. We lost a lot of tight games. Um, I think being like a, an English lad coming over, you know, obviously there's a bit of a, there's a big rivalry between French and English rugby. And I think there were maybe the journalists there or whoever was voting was pretty happy to see me not doing so well at the start, so it's probably an easy vote. And then, um, yeah, it's one of those things. But um, you know, we, we stuck we, it to we, them, um, though, didn't you? Sorry? Ultimately, you stuck it to them, though. Ultimately, right? Because then you came, you actually ended up um, winning. I think it was Player of the Month. You led Montpellier to the um, winning the Ch Challenge Cup as well, and yeah. victory. So, yeah, I think as well. It was, like, well. It's, it was, you know, it's um, every, every, everything that went well for me at the end was due to the team. 
um, due to the team doing well and playing in a, in a, in a good winning team. And I suppose, you know, that's, that's the nature of it when it was going not so well as well. You know, the team was struggling and I was struggling to settle in and, you know, find my feet in, in, in the league. And yeah, so it was, it was uh, one of those things that um, just, uh, you sort of have to just sort of shrug it off and crack on. And um, yeah, as I said, luckily, um, I had three or four other lads in the team as well with me there. So we could just have a bit of a laugh and a joke about it and try and forget about it. We've had guests on before. We had Zach Mercer on a couple of weeks ago as well, but um, saying those who've trained under Philippe Saint Andre told us he's a bit of a lunatic as a, as a coach. Any crazy moments that you, that you might remember from him? I just, I mean, he's such a great guy. Um, I mean, I, I, I love, I just love his him speaking in English and his French accent. It's just kind of can't keep a straight face. Um, <laughs> I, I think, like, yeah, maybe some of the like crazy moments like if you if you lose a game over there it's honestly like someone's died or like the world's about to end it's 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 pretty it feels like an absolute tragedy which obviously is a disappointment to lose a game and equally when you win it's sort of like you know like we've just won the world cup back to back or something um sort of thing so i think some of like the maybe some of like the bollockings that we got after games um from philippe at times and other and other guys um at the time, you're sort of just like looking down at the floor because it's just like, oh, just please don't laugh here because this is just like... Because we've heard that <clears throat> Tom Whitford would get a few words wrong now and then. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that was another one which we had before because obviously for us lads who don't speak great French, um, Tom would have to sort of translate what was being said to each of us and um, it'd be like, um, you're a cunt, um, you're this, you're that. And, <laughs> and poor Tom's there just like translating and saying, uh, yeah, so you're this and you're that and you're shit and I just sort of like... Yeah. Oh, my. You imagine having that job? That, it would be quite funny, though, wouldn't it? If you've got some <laughs> lunatic on the other end. But you'd also be able to change it and have a good laugh of it as well. Like, I think that's what I would do. I would just be like... You, and, and like the, but knowing the worst player there, you, you were shit, you are a wanker, you were brilliant. You were, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd mess around with it. on fire <laughs> today. But um, Tom, Tom's an absolute legend um you know obviously i was yeah i went there on my own and to have an english guy sort of uh looking out for me and went to his for christmas so obviously it was full lockdown pretty much the whole season yeah so um now nah, tom tom's a top bloke and uh yeah sometimes he had a thankless task of uh translating some of the tough messages but um no nah, he, he always did a good job he's a legend of a man a legend of a man what was it like sort of playing and training and actually competing with Andre Pollard every day? Yeah, so Polly, he, it, was, it, was, it was brutal really because he got this in, the injury, a massive injury in the second game of the season um, against racing, did his ACL, um, which was, you know, for me, I was really looking forward to going over there and playing with him because obviously everyone knows what a quality player, what, what a quality player he is and what he's achieved in rugby is incredible. So, for him to get injured so early was a uh, you know a disaster really for for everyone a disaster for the team. Um, obviously came back towards the end of the season um, and like showed his quality really. So um, and he, and having said that, even throughout the season, just to be able to like chat to him, pick his brains about a few things along with Cobus, um, that was really useful as well. So um, yeah, I, I imagine he'll be um, he'll be kick, hitting the ground running at Leicester next year, and it's a good signing for them. Over the years, you've obviously been competing for a place um, against and together with Owen Farrell. What's that been like? How and how heated has it been in training at times? Well, yeah, I mean, I suppose when I first arrived, Sarri's like 22 year old. I'd always played most of my rugby at 10. Um, had played centre in bits and pieces, really, um, but mostly played 10. So I think when I first arrived, I, you know. I was under. I'm not stupid. I know that he was. You know, he's the he's the fly off of the team. But I, it was it was a good opportunity for me as a young young player to to arrive, and I knew he'd be away with England at times, so I'd get some opportunities, um, which I really enjoyed. And obviously, you know, he's uh, he's like a coach himself. He he can help you with things um, that you never even thought of before. So yeah, there was like um, I, w- I wouldn't say there was like that lo- loads of competition in that sense, but. Um, I uh, having sort of you know moved out to play one out from him now, um, just sort of trying to create those relationships, create those understandings over the past sort of 
three or four seasons, four or five seasons has been has been amazing, really. So um, he's a great player to play with and always gets the best out of his team and um, and the players around him. So just um, great for that, really. Um, we know sort of just go back to the to the start a little bit now. You you were a very talented young sportsman. You played in the Chelsea Academy. Ryan, massive Chelsea fan. Actually, our producer Freddie, huge Chelsea oh, fan. How close did you actually get to making it? Oh, no one there. No one there. I don't know. It's um, no. It's I mean, it's uh, it's it was an amazing thing to have done as like a you know ten year old till sixteen, um, sort of going around all around the world playing football. When I was that age, I just loved playing football, and you know to go to America, Europe, um, over in Asia playing football. It's just like it's just like a dream as at that age, and it was it was awesome. And I got to sixteen and. You're sort of then competing against um, like a global sort of playing group, I suppose. So from, the, from like a 10 year old, you're sort of competing against guys who are London based and can get to the, basically whoever can drive to the Chelsea training ground within an hour. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say I was that close, but I had a great time doing it. And um, that sort of gave me a taste of what professional sports like, really. So, I thought, you know, I'm pretty, pretty happy to have done it, really. What, how, old were you, how, how old are you now? 28. Oh, so I'm trying to think when you were. No, been... no, that's all good. Because we want to know, like, who you must no, have come yeah. across, played yeah, with what, some, what, like, what, some, like, some yeah, people who ended up being all right. would have been a few boys that you that have made it now that you were yeah. in. Because you know, you see, like, Mason Mount and that, that all come through. Yeah. Well, so Mason Mount and Loftus Cheek were sort of a few years younger than me. Um, so didn't really sort of have too much to do with those guys. But um, well, lads that I played against, um, like, in the Southampton Academy, there was uh, Oxley Chamberlain. Um, Tyrone Mings was there as well at Southampton. Yeah. Jack Wilshire at Arsenal. Um, you know who else was there? Um, Connor Wickham. He was at Connor Wickham played in the Premier League. He, he was at Ipswich, I think, and he was amazing as a youngster. Um, oh, cool. So did you train at Cobham? Trained at Cobham. Um, so yeah, just like. Probably took an hour from my parents. My parents had to drive me everywhere. I feel sorry for them. They drive me to training every every night to go and play football. Um, and it was it was amazing. It, honestly, it was you know we were like I always tell the story. We we were like, I think fourteen and we had this tournament in America, in Florida, and um, the club really like Abramovich I think really wanted the Chelsea brand to sort of be seen at this tournament to sort of try and get into, get through to America and get through to that market. So. They were adamant that we were going to go to this tournament. And um, anyway, there weren't any flights to get us there. So that sort of like wasn't an option. So then next thing we know, there's like a group of these us lads, like 14 year olds in first class. Oh, my on the way to, on the way to um on the way to Florida. And everyone sort of look at we're looking around like what's going on here? All the other sort of passengers are like, who the hell are these lads? Like all they're all like ordering caviar and champagne, and, like we just want to die at Coke and whatever, just to go watch watch Super Bad on, on the iPad or whatever. It was like <laughs> Oh good. It was yeah. So that, that's the sort of thing they like that's sort of how well you get looked after. Um Oh, do you not yeah. regret it a little bit? Like do you wish you'd well, stuck it a bit more? I've been a bit better. Yeah, I mean it'd have been nice to have been a bit, a bit, a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you fall short if you had to like if you could if you were self aware, do you reckon? And, and what position were you? I was a midfield player, so yeah, probably having two left feet was no was no good. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. I, I think it's just yeah. I was I was alright, but I think as I said before, when you're suddenly competing with like because Chelsea they're not they're not messing about when they're looking for players. They've got scouts everywhere. You know they're they're looking for the next best fifteen year olds from all over the world. So it's just a it's just a high standard and a tough standard to keep up with. So. Um, yeah, I just wasn't. I just wasn't up to it. But um, yeah, I guess we yeah. Did. So I called it a day and oh. carried on with my rugby, really, because I was playing rugby at school as well. And I enjoyed that the whole time. So um, yeah. Um. Anyway, Alex, you uh, studied at one of England's uh, messiest universities, Leeds. Uh, <laughs> how loose did it did it did it get up there? Oh, it's a great place to to go to uni, or am I? Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, if you want to go out every night, you can, I suppose, um, if that's like what you want to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, was, I suppose for me, my first year, I really enjoyed it. I sort of threw myself into it, and 
you know, lived, I was, I, I went there as just a student. I wasn't really playing rugby like uh, for any team or anything like that. So I was sort of full student trying to, you know, juggle, you know, getting exams done and going out and, you know, occasionally playing a bit of touch or whatever it might be. But um, yeah, that first year was great. And then in the second year, I started taking it a bit more seriously. And obviously the exams got a bit more sort of stressful. And I was playing then for Leeds Carnegie in the championship, um, which was which was really, really great at the time. But um, yeah, Leeds is a great place. I mean, I don't know if the boys have been up there on socials or whatever, but it's um, there's so much to do. Um, everyone was everyone wants to have a good time, and um, yeah, it's a shame that I'm I just I'm way too old to go back there now. Just I miss it, but I miss it. But um, all, loads of good memories, and yeah, um, always look back on it with uh, yeah. What did you study? Sorry. What did you study? Economics. Oh. Um, yeah, so uh, as I said, first year when nothing counts, you sort of can just yeah. um, tee off and enjoy it. But then suddenly it gets a bit serious. And uh, yeah, I think if I'd have gone there and sort of got a third or whatever, I think um, mum and dad would have been a bit disappointed. So uh, yeah, I had to actually get my head down towards the end. Was there an initiation for the rugby team there? Yeah, there is. It's horrific, yeah. It was horrific. It actually, it actually put me off playing university rugby. I was like, oh. yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> go on, go on. It is. Well, I was just like, the, one, one of the worst things about it was like, you get to sort of second term in your first year and you sort of think, we've not done an initiation yet. Like, this is class. Like, we're not going to have one. Like, we've got away with this. Yeah. But actually, all they're doing is waiting for when it gets like really cold in January. Um, so they want it to be as freezing as possible. So they pick like the coldest night of the year. So like minus five up in the Yorkshire Dales. Oh. And um, they get you, they, they sort of trick you into thinking that you're on your way to a social, but it's like drag. So you're all dressed up as women. And then um, next thing you know, you're sort of like you're on, a, on, a, on, a, on a rugby field in the Yorkshire Dales, like sliding through icy mud baths, um, you, you, you know, sort of stuff like, like eating dog food, eating cat food. Um, <laughs> you know um, the normal stuff you know like matter yeah. of fact like. yeah like playing playing rugby with a pig's head um this sort of st- and, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, things of vegans nightmares uh, just so, keep and, you around for the guys with low self-esteem they're in so much trouble <laughs> pig's, <laughs> head, pig's head it was and it went on and on and it's like is this ever going to end and it's just like it was just punishment and um yeah, yeah, it was bleak, but um, I reckon the guys who organise that don't understand some of the psychological damage they're putting it for some guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm like some, cool. some boys are just there to play a bit of code and make some. Yeah, I was thinking like what I was there for. Like, next thing I'm like, yeah, so I, I'm, I don't know if they do it anymore. I think it's like been stamped out of the universities now. But this was like ten years ago, so um, yeah, it was it was um, a bit further away than the uh, the first class with the Chelsea team. Yeah, <laughs> could be further. Could be further. <laughs> Hello, oh. darkness, my old friend. <laughs> just like dear, right around your face on the dales. With your mascara just running down <laughs> your face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So, um, taking the tissue roll out your bra, like. Yeah. No you, really, you really question yourself, but <laughs> maybe, it was, maybe it was character building, I don't know. Let's hey, see. that's it. That's why you are where you are today. <laughs> um, you eventually signed for. Uh, the Mighty Wasps, where you were competing for a place with the infamous Andy Goode. Uh, but didn't he help you out financially on the pitch? <laughs> uh, there was a couple of... Um, well, that, yeah, I think at the start of the season, he sort of came up to me and said, how many games do you need to play to get your... Because it's not sign at uni, you don't get paid, like, you don't get paid much. and It's sort of like performance-based payments and appearance-based payments. So he was like, how many games do you need to play to get your bonus? And I was like, oh, I need to play this many games. He's like... Well, just let me know when you're getting close, and I'll um, I'll sub myself off with five to go in a few games. So um, yeah, Di Young probably won't thank uh, thank Goody too much for that. But um, what a legend, that's so I, good. I got like um, I probably had like the record amount of like two minute appearances in that season, <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, that managed to like, yeah, managed to pay for my holiday that year. So it was uh, it was pretty nice. Thanks, Goody. That is so good. What a legend. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. I'm going to have to speak to some of the younger boys at Glasgow. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Bonuses, bonuses. Yeah, just take a cut. Take a cut. Yeah, yeah. Cut me in, boys. 
yeah. Um, although, although at the time, were, were the players not getting paid? Like, was it, or is, is it in a sort of similar time where Dion was actually paying for the, for, 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 for the coach to take the team yeah. on, on away days? I think that was actually before I arrived um, in the season. They almost got relegated. I think that was like 2012 or 2013. I arrived in 2014. And I think it was a bit more, everything was a bit more stable. or well, a lot more stable, really. So, um, yeah, well, having said that, if, if everyone carried on like uh, Goody was, making sure boys get bonuses, then, you know, suddenly there's probably, there's no petrol for the bus or whatever. So, um <laughs> You yeah, know, it was it was a good it was a good couple of years there. I learned a lot, and um, yeah, obviously then Jimmy Gopeth came in as well, and he was he was he was class, and yeah, there was a lot of great, a lot of good good old old pros in the team who sort of I was a young player, sort of helped me out along the way there. So um, always look back and with fond memories of Wasps. Yeah, you decide to join the Saracens, which you previously admitted that you hated them. Them before you joined them, uh, we know Ryan as I mean hates a strong word, but Ryan hates them. Uh, what what was it about Saracens that kind of all other teams, players, and fans can sometimes well, find difficult? Yeah, I think um, I don't think yeah, I don't think I said I hated them. Maybe I think I said I, I had hated playing against them because it was so hard all the time. It was just niggly and gritty, and you know they make your life pretty pretty tough to play against. So. Um, I think to be fair, I wasn't in my second season. I wasn't playing that much at, at Wasps. Um, um, Rory Jackson arrived, um, obviously a, you know Scottish international, along with, with Jimmy Gopeth. And at that time, I was playing a lot of ten and wasn't really getting too many opportunities to play. Um, and you know, Sarri's Charlie Hodgson was retiring, and um, they needed someone to sort of come in and back up. Um, Owen Farrell and obviously I knew he'd be away for half the season playing for England so just for me it was like a an opportunity to go and get like a lot of games under my belt and just try and get better really um, having said that I think after my first pre, uh, first week of pre-season at Sarries they were sort of begging Charlie to come out of retirement because uh, I was in such horrific shape um, <laughs> that they uh, yeah they weren't really sure what they'd signed to us but um but yeah, in the end, I got well. Owen got injured at the start of the season. I had a few games at Saris at the start of the season, and that was that. You know, that got me off on like a, a good start, really. So, um, yeah, after that, it was it was um, much better. You um, you played five times for England um, under Eddie Jones. You said you were in mourning and felt dead uh, for over two years after being dropped in 2018. Uh, you've been in incredible form of late. Has, has Eddie Jones been in touch? Has he been saying things? Yeah, I mean that was. A, I'm not sure. I can't. I don't think I actually said that. To be fair, no. Was, these are all. These are all quotes, mate. These are all direct quotes. quotes yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I'd say you know. Obviously, it was. Um, you know, when you're involved in something and then suddenly you're not, it's it's like deflating and disappointing. And yeah, so that that was probably what that was probably what I was trying to get across when I said that. But no, it was it was disappointing. But um, yeah, I mean, I was. Um, I was I was put on standby for the Six Nations, which was which was I suppose, you know, it was all right. It's not it's not what, where you want to be, but um, you know I suppose it, having been in France and come back and been um, sort of nowhere near it for a few seasons to be to have played sort of well enough to be um, you know maybe a, an injury or two away from getting another shot was um, was 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 a positive, um, even though you always want more. So um, yeah, I, I suppose I just got to, you know, I've been injured the last few weeks, so I need to get back um, back fit. Hopefully, um, be involved this weekend and finish the season strongly, and just try and kick on from there. Because obviously, yeah, you, know, you always want to you always want to put your hand up and and try and get back in the mix, and you know, I've not given up on that, and pretty determined to keep um, keep doing my best in that sense. So um, yeah, we'll just see how it, see how it goes, but main thing get fit now and finish the season strongly and um see where that leaves me yeah we'll we'll probably get to these but i'm desperate to find out see so you've um you obviously won two titles with with saris yeah two premiership titles and then two premiership you for both european ones yes yeah, so they've won three they won one european before i arrived and then, uh so i've won two european two premiership and best piss up of all of those which one and how long did it go on for I think uh, I'd say the what the the um, the European final that uh, in Newcastle after we beat Leinster 2019, and that was when 
uh, Alex Good uh, didn't get changed for uh, for three days. Um, that's yeah, that's that's the one that always sort of well, I'll always remember, probably for that reason. Um, actually, at so you're out in Newcastle straight after, were you? So we we they had series, pretty good series. Like win or win or lose in the final, there'll always be like a like a get together after with like family and friends at like a venue in wherever you're playing. Um, so we did that. And then the day after, back down to London, just in St Albans. Um, yeah, Goody walking around in his boots and gum shielding, and just, uh, just, 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 you know, you guys know what it's like. Just there's not not loads and loads of stories, but like it just goes like that. It's so quick, and then no, you know. in for the next day, and then um, yeah, it was just it was just it was just a great time, and we luckily for us we didn't have to play the week after, so the boys just went on for as long as they could really. Um, I don't have that much stamina, so I sort of checked out in the morning of the third day. The um, awesome one. And just, uh, yeah. So there. hold on. So Goody finishes the game. He keeps his boots on after the game. He goes to the post-match yeah. thing with yeah. the family. And he's and he yeah. sleeps in his gear and wakes up the next day still in his gear. This, this is a bit of a myth, the, the myth of it, right? So he did have a shower after the game. And he went to the post-match event in, like, cities in his... Right. You know, Whatever, and then but it's all planned yeah. out. You know, he's, he's into the kit man about getting the kit washed, so he can put it on to build the day after and wear it on the plane. Very, very clever. So um, I think he even bought because he was wearing he was wearing like metal studs in the final. So all he had was metal studs. So he even borrowed some. I think he borrowed Scux's boots because they were mouldy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so he could get some. So he could get some grip in the pub and not fall <laughs> over. So um. But yeah, I mean, so that's, that's the thing about Goody. Obviously, everyone knows what a great player. I mean, he's been a brilliant player, probably one of Sarri's best ever players. Won, like, won everything, but he'll probably be remembered for that more than anything else, which is kind of a surprise, given how good a player he was. But that, that bender is what people remember him for. Sadly, all the time we've got left for now, a huge thank you, uh, Alex. You know, best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you, as always, to Ryan and to Max. Do join the Rugby Pass Discord to discuss uh, rugby news, transfer speculation, of course, the latest announcements for this podcast. Community is growing at a rate of knots.